Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, with Video Aerial Systems and the FPV WRA. Over the last few years, I've watched wing racing become incredibly popular. And if there's one thing that every wing racer seems to agree on, it's the spec wing class is the best. And the reason we like it is because these airplanes are incredibly cheap to build. They hit speeds of 85 to 90 miles an hour, and every single aircraft on the track is competitively the same. And that means that nobody can sink a whole lot of money into an airplane and expect to beat you. They have to beat you strictly on skill. And that makes the wing racing very, very competitive and a whole lot of fun. But it's been missing one thing. Foam board. This is an FPV WRA spec legal foam board airplane, which I designed so that you guys who like to build with foam board can join us in spec wing racing. And it hits all the numbers that are required by the FPV WRA for spec wing racing. It's a 36 inch wingspan, 12 inches of sweep, 9 inch central cord, 6 inch tip cord. Now I know the spec airfoil is a NACA 0014 and it's kind of hard to hit with foam board. So the way we got around this is that I put a spar that mates in these keyways right along the thickest point. And when this is folded over, it's very, very close to a NACA 0014 and therefore it is competitively the same. So if you want to get into wing racing and you like foam board, feel free to download the plans and cut it yourself or find a friend with a laser cutter. This airplane is absolutely open source and the plans are absolutely free. I designed it for one reason, so that you guys that like foam board can come down to the racetrack and enjoy racing with us. We'd love to have you. So with that, here's how you build the airplane. This spec wing is made from two sheets of simple Dollar Tree foam board, which I bought from the Dollar Tree for $2 for both of them. But you'll also need some other materials. You'll need some bamboo skewers for reinforcement. Obviously, you're going to need two servos to steer the aircraft. Some control horns. I'm using these Dubro 1 half A size. Uh, you'll also need control rods and quick links, such as these Dubro quick links and a 256 threaded rod. And then you'll also need a glue gun, some glue sticks, a utility knife, and a pair of diagonal cutters will always come in handy. So with that, let's get to building the airplane. It may not be intuitive where all the parts go. So before I begin, I'm going to show you... Uh, okay. It may not be intuitive where all of these parts go. So before I begin assembling, I'll tell you about the parts and where they go. Obviously, this in the center is the main frame of the airplane. This is one wing panel and the other piece of foam board is the other wing panel. You also notice these little keyways here. Well, these keyways fit the notches of these parts with the uprisen edges and that way everything locks together and makes sure the plane is built properly. But there are some parts that don't have keyways such as this. So this stress beam goes along this part with the keyways to give some extra uh, support to the airplane. But you've also got these notches here, and that's for this keyway part and this one, and that joins the planes in the middle. Now, these are made as a sandwich with other parts that aren't cut out uh, with notches, such as this part here and this part here. And of course, these are repeated on the other panel as well. There are two other parts that aren't so obvious, maybe three of them. This here, this thin strip goes along underneath where this elevon goes because you don't want the airplane to have a goofy airfoil because you're bringing two pieces of foam board together. So this is just a spacer. This of course is a winglet. Uh, this goes in the front of the airplane in the battery door. It acts as a front to where your battery and electronics bay will be. This is just a servo support. It's going to get installed under this in the wing. So other than that, that's pretty much it. So let's get to building the aircraft. We're going to build one wing panel at a time. This one seems to be holding together pretty well, so I'm going to move it to the side. And we'll start on this wing panel. Okay, so first things first, we've got to fold the structure of the wing along these lines. And I find that using a screwdriver or a bamboo skewer works fine simply press into the foam and drag down each line. And what you're doing is folding in the foam so that you'll make a crease which will fold over easily. 
I like to keep a relatively flat angle rather than standing it up. It seems to make the crease work just a little bit better. Okay, so once we've done that, you'll want to bring the plane panel over like this and press it together a little bit all the way down its edge. And you'll want to be sure that it makes a somewhat symmetrical wing. Obviously, it's not possible to get it perfect because this is foam board, not hot wire cut EPP or injection molded, but this is basically what you're doing. Now, you want to be careful not to push too hard and tear the uh, edge of the airplane up, but you want to fatigue this to make it easy. Okay, once that's done, you'll also need to make sure you have room for this Elevon here to move. So the easiest thing to do is just to fold it down and then take your knife and you'll want to cut a 45 degree bevel along the edge. And you'll want to be sure that you don't cut through the paper um, on the other side as this acts as a hinge. So you're really just trying to get this part right here more or less out of your way uh, so that you can make a hinge. Now, if you do cut through it, of course, you can simply tape it in place. And in fact, taping over the paper after you do this operation is probably a good idea. It's also helpful if you have a nice, sharp, fresh blade on your utility knife, and apparently this one's worn a little bit. So just make sure that you're able to fold this up and down reasonably well. Okay. Now, in this model, of course, there, this door here isn't mirrored on this side. I later updated the file so that this would go to the other side so your servos can go through. Speaking of servos, now's a good time to install this. This is nothing more than a reinforcing door for your servos. And your servos should fit tight or reasonably tight to this. So I'm using an adjustable heat glue gun and I have this set to 310 degrees, which seems about right. If you're using a standard glue gun, they get a lot hotter. So be careful about how much heat you use because it can melt the foam. These are of course quite expensive and it doesn't matter whether you use hot melt or cool melt glue sticks. It's the temperature of the gun that's going to melt the foam. So we're going to put a small bead of glue around here, around the edge. And then eye it up the best we can, putting it over the hole. And then we'll do our best to center that over this hole. Now we can drop our servo in, drop your line through here. Pull it through and then add a little bit of glue to the case. There we go, and there we go, a nice tight fit to our servo. Okay, the next thing we're gonna have to do is put our stress bar in for the wings, and this simply lines up along these holes here. So, again, a little hot glue, and you don't need a whole lot of hot glue to hold this. You can actually dab it in just a few spots if you wanna keep the airplane light. And I'm gonna put a little on each of these tabs to make sure it holds. And then just drop it in place. You want to fold this up and be sure that everything fits like that. And if it does, then you'll go ahead and glue this in place. Now you'll notice that this is tapered. It's thinner at the tip than it is at the edge. This makes sure that your airfoil is actually correct and complete. So go ahead and push that down in place using a good bit of force just to make sure it's secure and try to keep it as close to vertical as possible because again, this is going to have to line up uh, with this side here. And just double checking to make sure everything fits. Now 
Now I'm gonna press this together to make sure my keyways all line up, which they do. So that means that I would be okay to glue this panel, but not before I put some extra parts in. Okay, now for this thin bar. This goes right here along the back side of where your Elevon is. So just glue it in place on one side. Don't need a whole lot of glue, but just enough to get it there. And this isn't tapered, it's pretty much straight. And I don't go the full way down the edge just to give myself a little bit of room should I need to work on the airplane or something. Uh, I can reach in and fish the wires through and such. So there's a little gap here because this is where my servo is and allows me to get in there and, and fish some wires and some structural supports. Before we close up the wing, we're going to need to put our spars across the center which hold the two wing halves together. Now this is more than just one piece of foam board, but in fact made up of three as a sandwich glued together like this. And this gives a lot of support for the airplane that's going to flex. Now, the reason why we do three layers deep and two of them is because the most strain an airplane sees is in the middle. So to make a sandwich, you don't need a whole lot of glue. Just simply put a strip, glue it down like that, and then repeat on the other side. You can do the same thing with this joiner. Thin layer of glue. Push it together. And then on the other side. So we've got a sandwich with the tabs in the middle piece, just like that. Okay, to make sure those pieces go in correctly and at a 90 degree angle, the foam board has a nice 90 degree corner. So I'm simply gonna cut the corner out of this and this will just make it a lot easier to line up my parts by using that as a square. The long part goes in the back, the small part goes in the front. So we're just gonna add glue to half of this. And then stick that right in here and then use this square to line it up along this edge to make sure that it's straight. And this makes sure our wing will be straight when we go ahead and put it together. And then I'm going to repeat with this one here. Okay, we're just going to re repeat the same process that we used on that wing panel on this, but this one goes on the other side. So this way. So this piece should have been cut off by the laser and it wasn't. There we go. Okay, chances are your servo wires aren't long enough to make it all the way up into the servo bay. As you can see, they're just a little bit short. So now's a good time to install servo extensions if you have them. It's a lot easier to put this in when the airplane's disassembled than when it's fully assembled. Okay, with those in place, now we can go ahead and dry fit the airplane together. And I say dry fit, that is without glue, because once we start gluing this, we have very little time to work with it. And as you can see, this works just about right. Everything looks to be centered, square, and ready to go. So that means I'm ready for some glue, but, I've got to be careful here because this joiner will not get glued until last. After the airplane's put together, then I will put glue in this. So with that, let's go ahead and glue our joiners together.
Now, before moving on, we can add a little bit of extra structure to this airplane. If you fly like me, you crash, well, a lot. So these bamboo skewers do a very good job of adding extra structure to the airplane. They have some thin ones and thick ones. And depending on how you want to structure the airplane, depends on which one you want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one bamboo skewer here behind this uh, in between these two spars in what will be the electronics bay just to make sure that in a hard maneuver well it's not just the foam holding the plane keeping it from snapping so I'll just cut that off and then I'll run a bead of glue right along the edge here and then I'll just go ahead and drop that spar right there into place now Another good place for a spar, of course, if I've got one back here, it's not a bad idea to put one right up here in the front. So the same thing, cut my skewer, make sure it fits, which didn't, and then just a line of glue there and drop my skewer in place. Another good place for the skewer is in the back of the airplane. The reason for this is because when you crash, the motor's gonna wanna come forward into the aircraft. So putting another, uh, what I call a stitch bar, across the back isn't a bad idea. So now remember, this is where the airplane gets quite thin, so you can't go right to the back of the airplane. You're gonna have to push it in a little bit. So I'm gonna put it midway between this, uh, this bar here and here. So that looks about right, right there. Put down a little glue. Glue that spar in place. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue, extra glue to it just to make sure that it stays in place. Okay. You can add spars uh, if you want to protect the leading edge of the aircraft from impact damage. You can put some of these right along the edge if you like. But before you do that, I recommend that you fold these up and glue along this edge and this edge. That the, the two outer ones outside the main, fold the wing up, put glue in there, fold the wing up, open it back up, and then put these in. So to do that, let's put a little hot glue in here, 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 and here. Now, I'm gonna fold this over. Notice I didn't put it in the center there, just on the outer ones. And then I'm gonna push this together as if the airplane were going to be all the way together in one piece. And then I'm going to hold it here until the glue has a chance to dry. Which my luck, there we go. All right, so that, while the glue's drying, you want to be take some time to press this into shape. So just kind of work down the edge with your hands like that as the glue is drying. Now, I like to wait a full minute to make sure the glue is fully cured or because when I, if I open it back up and I stretch the glue out, it's gonna dry fast and it's gonna be hard to get it back to this structure again. So you wanna be sure your glue is truly fully cured before opening this back up. And of course, we're gonna repeat this on the other side. So let's check. Our glue is still wet, so. Now, while you're waiting for this to dry, you can dry fit this other side. No glue, no nothing. And you're going to fold it over like this. And just be sure that it's going to fit without having to trim anything off. And you can see here, I'm kind of running into some problems. So what I'm going to do is take my knife and I'll cut a little bit of this away to make sure that this folds up evenly. But everything else looks like it's going to fit. So um, again, since my glue isn't dry yet, let's go ahead and remove a little bit of this so that I'm sure my airplane goes together.
Okay. So now that my glue is dry, I can feel it down here, all dry and solid. And go ahead and open this back up. And you should see that there's a curve maintained in the wing. And what you're mostly going to be opening across is that center point, that center line. Be gentle with it because you don't want to break it. And we're going to repeat this same process over here with the hot glue. Now a little trick to keep from running out of hot glue stick, put a little dab on that and slide it back into the back of your glue gun. And that way it keeps feeding. Well, most of the time it will. So here we go here. Okay, so now what we're ready for is actually folding the wings in half and building the rest of the airplane. I like using these thin bamboo skewers along the leading edge to keep it from getting damaged. So you're going to need to work quickly because your hot glue gun, well, the glue isn't going to stay hot forever. So one thing I recommend doing is letting it sit and cook, that is get warm for a while and then take whatever's in the nozzle, just a little bit of glue and put it on a scrap piece of foam and that way everything that comes out is the same temperature. The nozzle's a little bit cooler and that's the first thing you're going to put down. So I recommend getting that cool glue out first and then going ahead and putting the rest of the structure on the aircraft. So let's do that now. All right, that's all the cool glue out of the way. And then here we go. You want to put glue across all of your spars first. Again, I'm only going halfway here. And then you can go ahead and glue down the leading edge and very quickly drop your spars in place, fold over the top, and then go ahead and line up your keyways. Again, work quick here because that glue is drying. Okay. Remember I said this goes in the front of the battery door. You may want to put this in before folding the other side up. And this goes right under here. And you'll find out that it's a very, very, very tight fit when you go to push it under there. So again, I recommend dry fitting this before going anywhere else. Because it may get in your way. So if that worked and it got it dry fit well, go ahead and put your glue on it. and then go ahead and shove it right in there. And it should be pretty tight, so don't worry about it being perfectly centered, just make sure that it's tight over here. And then, of course, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue right here for this other panel to go in place, and I might as well, yep, let that dry. Okay, again, same thing. I'm going to get a little bit of glue out of the nozzle to make sure everything that's coming out is good and hot. I've got my two skewers that are going to go in here and I'm going to have to work quite quick. So let's get that out of the nozzle and let's glue up this other side. And I like to use a zigzag pattern across the foam board because the foam is melted a little bit inside the paper. And so I want to be sure that I'm getting a good bond and not all the glues running in against the foam inside. Again, work quickly. One, and be careful, don't burn yourself. Okay, line up my keyways and push down. Now while that's drying, 
I can get this part right here. Okay, now that our airplane's assembled, it's time to look at our control linkages and our servos. You want your servo horn to run down this crease, that is the hinge, and not perpendicular to the airplane. The reason for that is to get the most resolution out of this elevon. If you run it perpendicular as the servo works its way up towards the front, it'll pull less and less and less on this elevon, and that'll cause you to have very, very little servo resolution. So you really do want the servo horn to run along this hinge. Now, I'm going to make a quick control rod by taking a quick link and a piece of all thread. Now, you can make your control rods out of whatever you want. I am simply using Dubro hardware because that's what I'm most familiar with. And I'm just going to clip this into my servo arm. Now, that is just so I can locate this servo horn in the proper spot. Now, I am going to aim the servo horn straight down the airplane and not in line with the hinge. And that's because this quick link will move and adjust according to how far it's pulled. Now, you want it to be close to the hinge, but not right on it. So maybe a half to three, maybe a quarter of an inch back is about the best spot. And then you want to mark where the holes are. And then you can just use something like oh, a 256 screw and just go ahead and poke your holes straight through. And then we'll go ahead and just screw this thing together. Now one thing I've seen people do that's probably not a bad idea when putting these quick links in is put a little bit of hot glue underneath them. And this just spreads out the surface area of the control horn so it doesn't want to tear so much. It's not necessary, but you know, a little bit of extra strength is not, not so much a bad thing because of course this is what's controlling your airplane just this little bit. So increasing the surface area probably isn't a bad idea. my servo wires in place, I can go ahead and glue the back of the airplane together. Again, not a whole lot of glue is needed for this, these joints. This foam board, it glues pretty well, so don't have to overdo it on the glue, especially in the back back here because that incorporates tail weight and most problems with flying wings is that they need more nose weight due to the amount of tail weight. So just go ahead and push that together and then let it dry. So our control horns now, we can go ahead and finish them. We'll set our servo so that it again runs in line with the hinge. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this quick link through my control horn, just like this. Then I'll take another quick link here, and I'm going to go to the highest hole on my control arm. I'm going to look at, with the control at neutral and the servo in line with my hinge, where about should I cut it to make a control arm, and it seems about right there is the right spot. So go ahead and take this off, and then I'll screw this in. Now, I like to use the top of the control horn, and the reason for that is because it gives you the maximum resolution of this elevon, and this elevon is plenty large enough to maneuver this airplane. So I tend to go to the outside of the servo and the very top of the servo horn, and that'll give me a lot of resolution. Now if you have too much throw, the airplane will stall at high speed, so if you go through for a maneuver such as pulling up and the airplane rolls out, you have too much travel and you need to reduce that. And rather than using dual rates or something in your radio, it's much easier just to bump up on the control horn or if you need more rate go ahead and bump it down. So you want to set this so that again your servo horn is basically in line with this crease and then when it slides over here you want your elevator or excuse me your elevon to deflect eh, maybe up you know about a sixteenth of an inch very very small amount you know, so you know one to two millimeters you know about a sixteenth of an inch um, 
like that and then go ahead and move it and make sure uh, that you have deflection. Now there is one last part I have to put on this airplane before worrying about the motor and speed control and that's the winglets and you'll notice that they're not perfectly symmetrical. They're a little bit smaller on the bottom than they are on the top. So this large portion goes up, the smaller section goes down. And rather than put the glue on the winglet itself, I just put it around the outside of the airplane. Do not glue your Elevon. You want that to move. So just around this portion right here, just add your glue. And go ahead and stick it on. You want the point to line up with the front of the airplane and then this V in the back should line up pretty close to your elevon. Now you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble getting that on there because of the cut of the airplane. So while it's still wet, I'm going to come in here and I cut that elevon a little bit short to make it fit. I'll go ahead and let that dry up. And then just to give myself a little bit of added structure, I'm going to put a bead of glue around the outside edge there. The airplane's motor mount is simply made from quarter inch plywood that I laser cut out. Now if you're using the stock motor screws, you'll know that, well, they're too short to get through that. So if you want to use eighth inch plywood, it'll still work and the screws will fit in. But if you want to use the stock screws and you end up with quarter inch, well, this is your friend. Simply line the motor up and then take a drill and drill about halfway down through. Be careful not to drill all the way through because you're just trying to get it so the, the screw will sit down inside the motor mount and then go ahead and tighten it in place. Right. To put the motor mount together, I could use hot glue, but I find wood glue works a little bit better. So you can see the keyways on the side of the motor mount here. And if I can get this to come out, there we go. Then these pieces simply snap right in place like that. And then you press them tight and the glue sets up pretty quickly, but I would let it dry fully before installing this on the airplane. All right, once the glue to the motor mount is all set up, go ahead and slide it over the back of the airplane. Now, you'll notice it's a very, very tight fit. And you'll notice I didn't put any glue on before sliding it up. And that's because this should grip the airplane very tightly. And that way it doesn't move around. Then, once it's in place, you can go ahead and add your glue. Now optionally, there is a wooden plate that can go in the middle of this, and what that does is it prevents the airplane from breaking in a crash. That is, when this airplane crashes, the motor's going to want to come forward through the foam. So you can use this area for your speed control, or you can put that wooden block in the middle, and that will help keep the airplane from breaking in a crash. However, you may remember we put a bamboo skewer in there between the pieces of foam, and this motor mount is now crushing them together. So that should help prevent the foam from breaking. Your speed control should be installed right between the runners of the wooden motor mount. So we'll go ahead and plug that up. And then add a little bit of hot glue. And drop it right in place. Now the reason why this doesn't go inside the electronics bay is this foam is insulating. And therefore the speed control can heat up and possibly burn up if we don't put it in the airflow of the motor. So I run mine exposed. You can tuck it inside the bay if you like, but you'll need a bigger speed control because there's a higher probability of burning it up. All right, there is one final thing we have to do, and that's get this airplane center of gravity correct. So flip it over and then take a tape measure and going from the nose, you'll want to make a mark 
six and three quarter inches back. This is the approximate CG point. So somewhere between six and a half and seven inches is the ideal point. So right in between that is six and three quarters. And you'll notice that this is just in front of where this motor mount stops. So if I'm looking at it, it's half of an inch. It looks like about half of an inch um, in front of where this motor mount stops. So take your battery. In the case of the spec wing, it's a three cell 2200 milliamp hour battery. And go ahead and throw this in your battery bay. Then put your fingers on those marks and see if it balances. If the plane falls forward gently, you're in good shape. If it falls back, well, you might need to add a little bit of nose weight. So in this case, my fingers are right on the marks, and as you can see, it balances perfectly. So all I have to do is strap in a battery, drop in a receiver, and this plane is ready for flight.